Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We have just heard a talk by our Lord Jesus Christ about the consequences of a, a, a sinner who was unkind and not merciful to others, and also a, a dis distressed person who was suffering here on earth, but had no transgressions as such. And one, as we know, was said, went to Hades, a hellish place, and the other one was in the bo bosom of Abraham, which is code for the uh, heavenly realm, as it is. This is very interesting because <clears throat> of all the people that have actually died and for some reason somehow have been resurrected or come to life again over the centuries, all declare these two things which we see in this particular parable, that there is a heaven and a Hades, a place for the saved and a place for those that are not. Even during Christ's life, he resurrected other people. His apostles resurrected even more. We know that Lazarus, who was um, four days in the tomb and was already decomposing, was resurrected. When he was resurrected, he also commented about the same sort of thing that we hear here. And likewise, you know, we have Tabitha that was raised by the apostles. There were many people raised during the resurrection of the Lord, went to the city, showed themselves. And over the centuries, there are many people that have been into death and have come back. And they all declare the same thing with one voice. There is a place of those which are saved and a place of those which are not, ones that are in torment. Why I'm bringing this up is this. Over the past few months, we have been striving to present the orthodox understanding about some of the aspects of the soul after death. As you know, and I hope you've read the book, Father Seraphim Rose wrote quite extensively about that to put to rest many of the wrong um, ideas that came into the 20th century, especially about what happens to a reposed soul. However, there are, and have been, over centuries, or virtually a thousand years, a group of people calling themselves Christians who do not accept this very, um, very um, sort of strong division between Hades and the heavenly realm. As it says here, between us and you is a great chasm which have been firmly fixed so those wishing to pass through to from this place to you are not able nor may any pass from that place to us these christians and the ones i'm referring to are the ones that departed from the original church in 1054 are known as the roman catholics have invented this other place called purgatory and what they say is that when a person dies, he goes there, and depending on what sort of sins they've had, they can spend a few minutes there or a few years there being tormented, and then they are purified, and they come out clean into the heavenly realm. Well, why is it that not one of those that have actually experienced death has ever come across such a notion of this other place of purification and of uh, fixing up that which a soul takes with it after the repose, after its repose. It doesn't because there is no such place. There is no such place. When you think about it, we call this a heresy, and this particular heresy stands in the way for people to operate upon themselves here whilst on earth. I have had Roman Catholics coming to me in my life. During conversations, you know, something will pop up and they'll say, oh, you know, I've done all these terrible things, that means I'll just be longer in, in purgatory, and that's it. You know, sort of like a, a joke of some sort. Do they really believe that? Do they really believe that there is this place where 
it's totally outside Christ, outside Christ's mercy, and it's therefore the purification of those people that haven't made it into the heavenly realm yet. They, these people, the um, Roman Catholics, have taken pages from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, and incorrectly rendered them to try and justify this particular heresy, a terrible heresy. It may seem like nothing at first, but for those who are under its sway, it stops them growing in that which has been godly ordained to them. Fix up your soul here. Grow in virtue here. Accumulate Christ's likeness here. Over there, you cannot do anything. Nothing. You are without a body. You cannot, no matter how much you desire it, fix anything up. Nor can anything else fix you up there. The church, as you know, does pray for the dead, the repose. And we ask the saints also to intercede. That can help. But that's, again, prayer for people who are living for those that are repose. It's not for, like, dead people trying to help dead people. Of course, the saints are alive and um, um, dwell in the heavenly realm close to the Lord. We... Um, have been presenting the Orthodox teaching about this for several months, plus a whole lot of other so-called heresies, wrong teachings about uh, particularly what the Roman Catholics have done. One of the reasons is this. A thousand years ago, when they departed from um, the Orthodox, from the, the original church, they went and took... Western Europe by force, essentially, and forced upon them their particular version of what they call Christianity. The Orthodox, which remain mainly on the East, in the Slavic lands and the Balkans and those places, did not interfere because they were under the um, yoke of um, the barbarians from the um, East, the Muslim uh, what do you call them, the um, Tata hordes and the Muslim ones coming up from the south. So they had enough on their plate for several hundred years to fight that off rather than go into the rest of Europe and reinstate original Christianity, which Europe always had. Even England. You know, 1066, the Catholic Normans came from France, destroyed the last Orthodox king in England, Herod, Herald and um, forced upon the people this Catholicism. And nobody stopped them. Now that things are freer, the Orthodox are starting to, if you like, flex their spiritual muscles here in the West and show to the rest of the world the truth about things. We have had uh, an incredible amount of um, feedback, mainly from these Roman Catholics, about the things that we wrote. I hate to say it, it's laughable. But because we're in church now and we don't want to make fun of people, all I can say is it's lamentable what they write. Lamentable. It shows such a great um, gap in understanding some of the basic things about Christianity. Such a gap. Listen to this. These are different quotes that they have written. The Pope, who is the, the so-called head of Roman Catholicism, has 800 cardinals to advise him. Now, the Pope, which is a bishop, what bishop needs advisers? A bishop should be able to give it straight, no matter what issue comes up, without any sort of advice from others. If he can't, he's not holding the, bishop, the, the bishop's seat at all. You don't need that. A bishop has to be able to tell it as it is, off the cuff, if necessary. That's what they're all about. Then they say, you don't even have true apostolic succession. Well, we know that's false. Of course we've got an apostolic succession. And we talked about that last week with the fidelities. 
This is a good one. The Pope is the vicar of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, really. Do we laugh at this or do we feel sorry for the people? The church came as a result of the schisms that occurred between the year 1045, not 54, 1045. Ask me if Jesus Christ had a time machine in order to establish orthodoxy in 1045. And this is supposed to be pious, learned people making such quotes to us, to the orthodox. Nowadays, even Orthodox Jews, Muslims, atheists can be saved under certain circumstances according to the Roman Magisterium. Magisterium, what is that? That's their sort of um, the book of all their laws and how things are supposed to be operating. Their um, business model in detail. Now, they're talking about the Mother of God. Mary occupies a seat of authority equal to Christ in the Catholic Church. You know. So in other words, she's a goddess. When he died, Christ descended into purgatory. We know he did not. There is no such thing. He decided, descended into Hades and freed all those that were there, trapped from the Old Testament times. Christ commanded the apostles to catholize the world. <laughs> Where did they get that from? Catholize the world. The Pope is prophesied in the Old Testament. Again, where did they get that from? Roman Church was established in Jerusalem in 33 AD. Now hang on. Is it in Jerusalem or is it in Italy? Where was it established? Because Rome's in Italy. Not in Jerusalem. You're just jealous because you're not one of the Peter. Not one with Peter. In other words, they substituted Christ with Peter. And they consider Peter to be a greater person who has built the church. Jesus said, if you honour me, you should also honour my Peter the Pope. Master of the universe. Supreme Pontiff of the Universal Church, Emperor of Christodom, an upgrade from Servant of Servants of God. I don't know what all that means. In the Bible letter to Paul to Rome, the Church of Rome was already existed before Paul and Peter came there, and it was a Jewish Christian church. Really? Apostle Luke was Jewish, the Magi were Jewish, uh, the Samaritan woman was Jewish, the Centurions at the Cross were Jewish, Pontius' wife was Jewish. These were Christians, you know, part of the first original church. You believe we grow in Christ's likeness after death. That's purgatory, dude. <laughs> How they figure that out, I don't know. It's, it's funny, I know it's funny, but we shouldn't laugh at it. The Catholic Church is the mother church of all churches on earth. Purgatory is a state where Jesus purgates the sins of men. Purgate the sins of men. Well, hang on. Christ has mercy upon sinners and he forgives and raises them. He doesn't need to put them in some other state to do that. Because we go through three stages... Because of Jesus' death on the cross, we are justified when we first believe in the gospel, then sanctification, which is being made holy, and then glorification, we go and see the Lord. All this happens because of Christ's death on the cross. Well, I mean, really, Jesus Christ is a papist. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a papist, you know, meaning he's from the Roman papist. There are two types of purification, active and passive. I'll try to figure that one out. Active and passive. Purgatory is real. It's religious, scriptural and scientific. And then they talk about Luther who, went, who started the second movement of um, Protestantism after the Latins departed. Luther was ignorant, not a theologian. 
Some people live the purgatory here on earth. I don't think I should tell you any more about that. When you read such things and when you hear such things and you think that 1.3 billion of the people in the world adhere to this sort of thing, you think, really? When you really ask them in detail what do they believe, all they do is quote from different propaganda pieces that they have, but they can't explain anything that makes sense at all. Nor can they live any of it, which is even more important, to be able to live these things that you quote. I don't want to say much more about this, only that, that we as Orthodox Christians know from Holy Tradition, we know from the scripture which we have just read, and from many other incidences, that there is no such thing as a halfway house between heaven and hell. When a person dies, the soul is immediately shown its true value so that there is no misunderstanding about what it is because most of us think that we've had got certain great things which in fact in God's eyes may not be so. That's why there is a particular part in scripture which says that uh, the works that are not valuable are going to be burnt up, um, taken away and only those which are of value retained Retain till when? Until the great judgment. Until the great judgment. If there's purgatory, there cannot be great judgment because everybody comes out pure out of it. Totally holy and pure. Absurdity again. And we know that there will be a great judgment for everybody. Absolutely everybody. Because that is one of the fundamental indicators at the end of the world and the resurrection of the dead and the uh, making of the new heaven and the new earth. May God help us stand fast to this proof that's been given to us in Orthodox Christianity and to be able to declare it properly to others. And you need to be able to because people like that are so full of little quotes and bits and pieces that they can't get it together. So it's pretty easy to sort of demolish their um, arguments. However, when you do that, the reaction is to criticise you, to send derogatory comments to you about it, to swear at you and to you know, call you all sorts of names. Because I have no answer. God help us not to be like that. But to do this sort of work out of love for them, because we don't hate them, we just don't have anything to do with the unrighteousness that's presented from there, because that unrighteousness stops people going into the kingdom of heaven, stops them acquiring the Christ likeness for which Christ was sacrificed.